The Palo Alto Network's firewall, panorama management concepts. We're starting to get into, well, how to scale things out and manage lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of devices. The centralized management platform for Palo Alto Networks is definitely something that, you know, a few questions may be, oh, shall we say, appearing about if you take the exam. So either the ACE or the CNSC, I would be aware of what Panorama is and some of the details for it. So Panorama gives us really kind of global views, if you will, and controls over your Palo Alto Networks firewalls. So right now we have one that's showing is designated in our lab, even though we've made it HA, so we got a couple of them. But you know that we have, you know, at least four in our network here, two physical and two VMs. As your network grows and you look at, you know, deploying them at office after office after office, you know, I know you do test bed first and kind of play around with it and decide whether you like it or not. Walk before you run, completely understand this. But when we start looking at that, what you need to think about is, okay, cool. So not just one device and okay, fine, I like the GUI, whatever. What am I going to do if I have 100 of these? What am I going to do if I have 400 of these? What am I going to do if I have 400 of these and a bunch of users with that global protect stuff and everything else going on? After a while, you need to think about how you're going to manage. Okay? So Panorama as a platform gives me the global controls over that whole network there. Okay. So things we need to look at for benefits, and these are kind of good key words or key phrases to be aware of, is centralized, and we'll see this over and over. So centralized config management. Okay. We also have centralized, kind of seeing a uh, catchy theme here. Logging and reporting. And lastly, we have, what's that word? That's right, centralized. We're doing good at this. So centralized deployment management, which makes it really easy to deploy things, you know, or really put things in place before a device goes out into the field. So MGMT. Uh, so when we start looking at this in here, again, centralized being my key word for it, that's the whole point that we're trying to get to, is no matter how many devices you're going to have in there, you have lots of leeway in doing this. Now, of course, these are licensed, you know, come on, it's the way that things work these days. So licenses for Panorama is by the number of devices managed. So they can be done in 25... 100 or 1,000 increments. And you can, you know, do this in a physical box or in a VM, you know, whatever you happen to want to do in there. Uh, if I'm doing physical box, then, uh, let's see, I'll put a, a little box up here, and this will be my M100 is the actual name for it. Otherwise, it's VM-Panorama, I believe, is the other name. But, you know, whichever way you want to go. And we can also have combinations of these. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But these can be deployed in high availability as well. So we can have a pair of them because, you know, life works better in pairs. Remember, no single point of failure. We can support file shares. So we can work with a SAN or a NAS or something like that. Uh, if we, you know, we need, we need to get file shares over two terabytes. Uh, we can do NFS for logging, all sorts of cool things in there. We can access, uh, so see, access methods... would be what we are standard ones so cli kind of the the easy one in there uh we have our gui which is http and we also have an xml api uh, so we have lots of different ways that we can interface with this management software in here now the firewalls themselves are actually who initiates connection so from a ease of use or ease of getting into i suppose might be a better way of looking at it we do the configuration on the firewall in order to initiate the, con the connection to the panorama to the m100 or to the the vm it's a certificate-based SSL connection. Uh, we do this over, let's see, management is over TCP uh, 
Uh, you get some, yeah, I guess, interesting port numbers to kind of look at across the whole Palo Alto domain in there. But anyway, and this specifically for Panorama. Now, when we start looking at this, the Panorama device is the master of all my shared config. Now, that term becomes very important. So let me clear this off here real quick. All right. So when we start to look at kind of our, our pieces parts involved in this, I, I want to kind of go with the idea of shared config. Because we're going to have lots of little things that, that may be entailed in this. We also have device config. So we have some things that will be on the individual devices, other things that will be controlled centrally in there. And, and we'll talk about the interaction and stuff like that uh, as we kind of go in place. So as we go through here, we're going to have, uh, we have device groups. We'll have shared policies. We will have shared objects. Sharing is good. Uh, we'll have access domains as well, which kind of gets into our controls a little bit. And we'll have uh, some more of our RBAC, which if we remember is role-based um, administration and control. So all of that, those things in there help centralize our control and really can help, sh help shape that control as well. So part of the centralization we'll kind of get into is dynamic updates. Now, neat thing in here. So, so let's picture how we're going to have lots of things talking. Well, let me, let me flip up a graphic here real quick. So when we start looking at this in our you know panorama in the, the quote-unquote middle of our network, we'll have all sorts of different firewalls, different sizes, different flavors, whatever you want to look at from all around our network, all reporting in. Now, when I start doing this, Think about, you know, and again, scaling out, you know, so this may be only, what, seven firewalls in here. Let's think that each one represented 100 firewalls, okay? because we got a big network, right? So you and I are going to have lots of fun with this. So 700 different firewalls, and all of them, of course, are going to be licensed for my threat protection, my antivirus, all the, the important stuff that I need to have. So I have 700 updates being done, those dynamic updates. And whether I do them daily or hourly or, you know, every 15 minutes if it's wildfire, depending on what my level of panic happens to be, multiply that out. And when you think about every file could be between, you know, 70 and 200 meg, you just, you know, pick numbers in there. And you're talking about a lot of bandwidth. So one of the things that we can do, because, you know, out of all of our bandwidth, the, the bottlenecks in our network tend to be our external facing links. So that wonderful world of the Internet. So with that in mind, my M100 or, or my... Oops, back to my drawing mode here. My... Um, management platform is the one who will pull the updates from the Internet. Okay. So we'll say from Palo Alto Networks. On the other hand, all of these guys are going to get the updates from the Panorama. So internally, I'm using my bandwidth. And I may have this guy update even faster than what my other policies tended to be. to make sure we have the latest and greatest no matter when anybody updates. But my bandwidth would then be used inside my network as opposed to going outside my network. From a scalability point of view, from a network design point of view, that's a very important feature for us to look at. The Panorama server can actually push it down uh, as well as part of our policy. So while we st start thinking about these things here where we could configure the updates going this way, more importantly, I can have it set to go that way. And that way I can fully control, even on a geographic or device group basis, how often things are going to update, where they're going to go, how it's going to work, and everything else, really all from one uh, you know, management area, if you will. So as I go through things, I start looking at things here, one point of view, I can set all these configuration options for it. So kind of makes it a little bit nicer that way, a little bit simpler, if we will. All right. So when I start getting into my configuration for let me clear this off here real quick. And going through what's going to be done, let's get rid of that. 
There we go. And as we start seeing things kind of on an individual firewall, if I look at, let's see, what will I be in my device? Setup. Management. And then we'll get into Panorama. And that's where my configuration is going to be, or my information is going to be on my Panorama server. Whether it be an IP address or an FQDN, uh, either can be used. Honestly, IP is preferred. It's the recommended way of doing it. If you have a Panorama in an HA pair, so this is kind of interesting. So normally, when we start thinking about HA, we start thinking of shared IP addresses. You know, so one IP address, it flips between the two of them, and that's going to be that. In an HA for Panorama, we have to have both IPs listed. Uh, so the HA portion not only takes place at that central server side of things, but it takes place in the communications of every single device that happens to be talking to it. So kind of a, an interesting way of looking at how the failover portion is going to be done in there. Now, the same screen can be used to disable the pushing of policies or objects or certain things like that, or of a, a um, the device and network templates. Okay, and, and again, we'll kind of go through each of those as we go down here. Both of those are enabled by default. So once I set up my device on here, Panorama is going to push whatever it wants to on down to me, and life is going to be simple that way. Now, Panorama offers, also offers those role-based access controls, the RBAC. Okay. So we have uh, different levels within our RBAC here. We have uh, global admins. We have device group admins. Uh, I have template admins. and local admins. All right. So each of these is allowed to set up controls that you know are really, I guess, will best match your environment for what things you do or do not want to have in here. Now, configurations that are pushed out are comprised of both templates and groups. So I'm going to blip this off here a minute. All right. So I have both templates uh, we'll, we'll just call it device groups first. I'll list more things under that. And templates. Uh, now, the different pieces that we have in here. So my templates are going to be more for uh, device config and network config. my uh you know groups in here my my um device groups are going to get more into my policies and my objects so the things that are i guess more tied to the actual security themselves these are more specific to the implementation of it and i can get into things you know we can have stuff that's going to be a device group or we can also have uh, global shared groups which actually consist of device groups. So these things feed in to right here. Okay. So really this yields a whole lot of variety in terms of the hierarchy that I can do for what pieces or parts of configuration that I'm going to be passing down or how I'm going to lump things together. And that kind of brings a lot of controls, I guess, to where we can start looking at things. So a device, you know, so a, a firewall, we'll just call the, the device firewall in here, belongs to a single device group. Uh, and so we have to choose wisely as far as what it is. Virtual systems, by the way, uh, so if I have multiple virtual systems on here, each virtual system could be in a separate device group. 
So I do have a little bit of controls as far as that goes, uh, not on the firewalls that, that we're using in our lab, because remember the, the VM, uh, the VM100 model and the PA200 don't allow for virtual systems, virtual routers. So you know, some things in there, but my larger systems where I have virtual systems, I can actually break that down in there. So I can deploy globally there uh, as a single group. I can do it based on, you know, things like geography, or based on functional boundaries, let's say function, or, or really whatever reason that I want to do, or single, or you know whatever makes the most sense to you. So we get lots of controls in there as far as how we're going to set things up. So device groups, like I said, belong into shared groups. So whether I do this by the geography or by function or whatever is up to you. Branch firewall, data center firewall, um, ISP edge firewall, you know, things like that. Th those are all kind of good ideas as far as what we might see or what we might be rolling out with it. Now, by the way, naming your objects can get to be very problematic. Okay, and we talked about this a little bit when we did our objects and stuff before and certainly our policies. Everything has a name. Everything should have a name that makes sense to be identifiable. When I start doing this in a larger global setting, that becomes more of an issue. Okay, and the reason it becomes more of an issue in there is the more specific is going to override things which means that I'll have my, uh, you know, shared groups, which can be overridden by a device group, which can be overridden by local config. Uh, so you got to kind of watch how that's going to play out in there. Now, this could also be a method uh, that you use intentionally, because I know that, you know, since the device can only belong to a single group that can, it, we can get ourselves into logical dilemmas with things. So I actually can use this to my own benefit, where I have a local config named the same as a device group or a shared group config um, that will obviously override it. So, you know, we, we have some, I guess, logical games that we can start playing in there uh, in order to do that. But everything else we do is going to be centrally managed and then pushed out, uh, those things assigned to share groups or device groups in there. In here, so in our configuration for this, okay, so in my device group or in my shared group config, I also have an option that says, I'll put this up here, Shared objects take precedence. So basically going completely opposite of what I just told you. So this default behavior over here can be overridden and we can override it on a piece by piece basis. So decide what you're going to be doing in there. Well, I, I, should, I should say not a piece by piece basis because that's a system wide setting. Okay. So be careful what you're going to do with it. Either pick this or deal with the way that it is right here. A lot of it just has to do with your um, desire for control, your policies for control, how many admins you have, how many fights you get into, you know, small things like that. You try to keep things nice. Now, when we start doing this, okay, and, and this all becomes... Um, Oh, shall we call it entertaining? <laughs> That's one word. Let me clear this off here real quick. Um, when, when we get into global administration of the network, okay, so having hundreds or thousands of firewalls in here, no one person is going to maintain all of those. So we have admins in different places that tends to yield political battles. Right, we draw our lines and have all sorts of fun. Now, when I do this, my policies should balance uh, the local and global administration. Right. So remember, panorama policies are tied to device groups. They can be sent to a whole device group or to an individual firewall. Once they're pushed down, though, the panorama policies cannot be edited on a local device. Okay. So we'll say uh, no local device, no goal. editing of shared objects, okay, which include policies. So while I can't 
edit the things in there. I can override them, and I can look at the order that I put everything in. Okay, so remember the the way that my firewall processes stuff that top down, but you know once I get a match, I'm done kind of thing. That part doesn't change just because I'm doing central administration. So the rules that I learned about how each individual, so one single firewall right here, each one thinks is going to be exactly the same. So, you know, one of the options that we end up doing a lot of times, so kind of a real life version of things in here, is that we create pre-rules and post-rules, which do well kind of exactly what they say this allows us to put more policy control on the local device or the local administrator anyway who in theory knows more about their local domain than what the entire corporation happens to be doing but still gives me some options for things so my order so order of operations in terms of my policies is i will have my shared call these pre whoops R E policies. Then I have my device group pre policies. I have my local firewall policies. I have my device group. Post policies, and then I have my shared group post policies. And we'll see them actually in the configuration. When I go look at my policies and stuff, they will show up exactly like that in there. So that gives me, again, more controls over what it is that I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So a device group can show the policies, you know, for shared config or device config, you know, whichever one I want to do in there. And honestly, one of the best things to do for testing is to look at, there's a, there's a checkbox in there when I start looking at things about showing the uh, combined rules preview. Uh, and this will go through all of the policies to really see where your rule is going to fit and how it's going to be applied on a particular device. Th that's at the, if we go to the device or the group policy page, it's not at the very bottom, there's a little checkbox for it. But that's kind of a nice way of seeing, you know, and again, centrally we think about these things, what effect will this have on X device or on the person who's in charge of it or what kind of fight am I going to get into? You know, any of these things we want to look at. So when doing policies, it's important to think through that. The other thing it's important to think through is zone names. All right, I'll put this in a nice little box here because it's important. So zone names are case sensitive. They can be specified either through panorama templates, because remember they're part of my network portion, or configured locally on a device. Any policy that's tagged to a zone name that doesn't exist, so you forgot a capitalization or did something different or had a typo or whatever, is going to be discarded. More importantly, though, any commits with that will fail. Right? So even though it's only one thing, and even though it's a, you know maybe on a one device in there, I can do a commit to an entire device group, and it's going to show me a failure. So anytime you see a failure, go check it out, make sure, see what you got on there. Uh, you know, device group, template groups, any of those things, will the entire thing is going to show failed, even if one single device is who fails to commit on there. Now, templates, like I said, allow you to do the setting of the device or network things, even allowing you to centrally manage uh, management interface configs or server profiles, anything like that. Now, still same thing that we got to before in terms of order of uh, precedence, anything we do locally is going to override the templates. But large deployments, this gives me a way to pre-populate or give a starting point for these to kind of give a head start to any administration that's out there or, you know, take advantage of whatever we have centrally. When looking at a device in Panorama, okay, you know, we've got little indicators that we're going to see on there. Anytime I see a yellow dot, I won't draw on yellow because we won't be able to see it very well. So yellow dot equals override. 
So basically, something that we push in a policy was overridden by um, the a local policy in there. Now, you do have the ability to remove overridden object. Uh, you'll see that in one of your, your little checkboxes that you have. So I wouldn't... I, <sighs> I hesitate in recommending to do that. I'd say think carefully before doing that because you really don't want to get in configuration warfare with local admins. That typically does not end well for anybody. And you got enough going on in large deployments. You don't want to make your life any more difficult. So just be careful with things. Use the yellow dot as an indication to I need to make a phone call. <laughs> That's going to be a much more sane way of doing things in there. Okay? Now, one of the other things, or I guess one of the last things that I want to talk about that we can do, Panorama can actually proxy a management connection down to an individual box. All right, so kind of cool things. So individual firewall config, uh, we can get in there and change that, you know, at least assuming our login has rights to do so, but we can get onto an individual firewall in there. To do this is called a context switch. So you're switching from the context of the global administration down to an individual device administration. So kind of cool things that we can do in there. Um, it, it's above and beyond the device group rights in terms of what we have. So like I said, it's going to depend on whether you've got the rights to the individual box or not. But that's just one of those things in terms of how we do this stuff. All right? So all the little fun things that we go through in there. When you're creating your policies and your workflows and everything else, it's good to be able to commit a workflow before you push policies down. All right? So I have my commit at the panorama level. I have my push to the device level. So two different steps or two different things in there. And really, by balancing this, it helps you kind of minimize the errors or at least minimize the scope of the errors or misconfigs, things like that. Uh, you can look at the status of a commit job in your tasks menu um, in the, in the web, uh, web thing in there. So no big deal. One of the other neat things that we do with Panorama, by the way, is aggregate the logs from all devices. Now, in this communication, logs are actually buffered, so even in loss of communications, it's not like you're going to be losing things in there. They're all still buffered at the local level and will, will end up being sent to the panorama. Large deployments, we can actually have multiple M100s or multiple panorama devices set up just as log collectors. So we're using, you know, you know uh, spreading out our disk space usage and things like that, our processing power and stuff like that, to aggregate all these logs or to collect all these logs and separating it from the actual management function in there. And, and that's just, again, really large deployments that you'd be thinking about doing that. But we got lots of options, if you will, for what Panorama can do with us. When we get into all of my logs, you know, logging is only as good as what you look at. So you have them to look at. Most of the time, we'll probably look at it and say, yeah, that's kind of cool. It's a whole lot of information. I really don't have time for this. Believe me, everybody does that. So while it's not necessarily the best thing, I understand. <laughs> On the other hand, we do have a very robust reporting engine that we can run, a bunch of canned reports, and the ability of creating custom reports as well. Being that I'm on an aggregate level through all my firewalls, I would say that gives me a whole lot more control. Spend some time creating some custom reports to filter out information that is important to you, and then make sure to run those on a uh, you know specific time frame, but on, on an ongoing basis. Uh, so that way we have the information, we log the information, that's all well and good, but how quickly do I know about something? How quickly can I react to it? Just because we can do all these cool things centrally doesn't mean you can set it and forget it. So watch your configs, watch your logs, watch what happens on the network, but we have great ways of being able to manage the whole thing. All right, we got lots of cool things going on with Panorama. Uh, so again, this is kind of my, my centralized management. I should say my centralized or hierarchical, since we can have more than one, of lots of different platforms, lots of different devices that we can put in there.
Okay, so many, many, many things. We have two different key concepts as far as parts that we're pushing out. Uh, we have our, I'll just call it my group config. Okay, so my device group or shared group in there, which is going to be my objects and policies. And then I have templates. which is more my device level stuff. So the, uh, I'll call it network and device. So I can manage all sorts of configurations all across the board and everything we have going on. Talked about the specifics in there, but it's good to know what we're getting into. All of this stuff being pushed out, uh, logs being aggregated, along with a great reporting engine to go with it, gives me everything that I may need to do in order to centrally manage lots of different firewalls. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.